That was perfect. That's the intro. That was perfect. Thank you. I mean, after I, after I turned you down like crazy, it was perfect, but. The only way you can turn me down. The only time you can turn me down. I can't turn you down any other times. Turn Just... down for what? <laughs> what? You're so white. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to break it to you, Elise. You're, you're white. I know. Thou, view, thou, view, thou, view, thou, view. Vow to view, vow, 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 vow to view, vow to view each other to these even though we don't always like them, but it's okay because we love each other and movies too. Hello and welcome to Vow to View, your doof media podcast all about marriage and the things we make each other watch. My name is Elise Daly. And I'm Scott Daly. And together, we're, we're the, the Dailies. Dailies. Yes, this is the podcast where each and every week, Elise and I pick a movie, we make each other watch it, and then we come sit in front of some microphones and we talk about it. Yeah, we pick two different movies. I don't yeah. know if I've ever well, we each We each that. pick a movie. Did you say that? We yeah. each pick a movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't listening. Of course. And then Elise doesn't listen to me while I record this podcast. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got other things to do. This week on the show, we're talking about um, 90s movies? 90s movies. Why are we talking about? Because when this was originally going to come out, it was the week of the mid-90s. And then the movie mid-90s. The movie mid-90s. Jonah Hill's new movie. And then we were postponed a week due to my insane amount of stuff that I'm trying to do all at one time. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so, yeah. So now not only have we not seen Jonah Hill's so we're mid nineties, midway through November talking <laughs> about mid nineties. We're not midway through November. So. I mean, it's practically over. <laughs> um, we haven't seen mid nineties. Mid nineties came out two weeks ago, which means everyone's already forgotten about it. So in retrospect, Maybe wasn't the best theme, but it, it gave me an excuse. I mean, I love excuse. the 90s movies. Yeah. I will watch 90s movies forever. It gave us an excuse to talk about the 90s, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to talk about the 90s and watch more 90s movies before we die. But before we die, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I think that's a safe bet, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about our two movies. Elise, what, remind me, what movie did you pick again? I picked Wild America. There was a brief second there where you forgot because I could see the look on your yeah, face. Yeah, I had to remember what I picked. <laughs> it's okay. I remembered. I picked The Rock. Yeah. I was really disappointed. There was no there was, there's Dwayne no, The Rock Johnson. Well, I love was, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I, we're, we'll get into that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, it's a so, very disappointing movie. So we're going to talk about the 90s. We're going to no, talk the Rock. about those two movies. But first, Elise. Yeah. It's ever roses and thorns. It's rosies and thornies. Every yeah. rose has its thorn. Has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Dawn, dawn, dawn. Every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. Every rose has its thorn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And I've been trying to think about what is my rose going to be this week? I'm interested in this. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think. Um Today it was really sweet. I we have this thing at our school called silver compliment tickets where we're supposed to like recognize students that have positive behavior and then they get their name on the announcements and then they get to go down to the principal's office for a positive thing to like um get recognized they sign the like silver compliment book they get a prize and they get to like have a little dance and I think you they do the mention them dance. at the announcement and yeah the, and they're at the assembly and so i mean i've done silver compliment tickets for a while but it was just really sweet that today one of the kids that got it who i know has never gotten it before because uh the student was new to the school they i was working in my room because they were at specials and when the student came back I've never had a student come up to me and hug me and say, thank you so much for, you know, like writing that. And that was just like, so it was really sweet. He gave you a compliment. Yeah. For the compliment. Yeah. And actually I, I'd written three 
And two of the three did it uninitiated. One of them, I think, did it because when they came back, two of them were in my homeroom. And then so one saw the other one do it. So they thought, you know what? Yeah, I should probably say thank you. But I mean, like the other one, too, is like completely not, you know, like me saying, oh, yeah, did you go down and get that? It was just thank you for doing that. And, you know, the kids oftentimes don't thank you for doing that. And I mean, I'm thanking them for their good stuff. But it was just it was really sweet to see how much it meant to someone because a lot of times kids don't show that and so that was really sweet today that's great yep what about you scott what was so good for you this week i'm good to talk about politics again oh yes it was good okay (laughs) i thought Um, you might have had that as your thorn and maybe you will have it as a rose and a thorn because it's it is two sided. Spoilers. Double edged sword. Uh, yeah, the midterms were. Um, Double edged sword. Mm. Yeah, that's an expression. I know it's an expression. Did I use it correctly? Did you say the phrase "double edged sword"? I did. So then you used it correctly. I guess so. Wow. Wow. Anyway. Okay. The midterms my, elections. My were half this glass week. is full, babe. Stop with that. Uh, the midterms were this week. In the United States of America, it was very important. The most important election. Would you say that America was wild this week? Was it a wild America? D- d- don't hmm? do that. Don't do that. No. Was it? It was not a wild America. Was it a wild ride that you were taking on? No. It was it a wild American ride? No. Led by Devin Sawa? N- we're not talking about that yet. But we will. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm interrupting. Continue. <laughs> So um, it didn't go quite as well as we had hoped. That wild ride. But it still went pretty good. I am a card carrying. I think literally, I think they gave me a card. Uh, Democrat. I guess you that's where that card? expression comes from. Yeah, we're, the, the card carrying means... You they, seriously have a card? Yeah, they give you a member of Democratic Party card. They give you that. When? When you sign up to be part of the party. I don't know. Interesting. Um. So I was obviously hoping that it was going to be a very good night. Um, wasn't as good as we wanted to, but Democrats took back the House, which is good because that means the president has to bring Democrats to it the table. It means there if he are checks and that. balances, which is what our government was designed to have. We just need some checks and balances. Sorry. Yeah, and um, my congressman won. Uh, of our district, Colin Allred, beat Pete Sessions, who is um, I was thinking of the polite way to... He's an asshole, um, and I'm glad he lost. And Colin Allred was a very good candidate. He's a former lawyer, former football player. Um, he's lived in the community his whole life. He ran a really good campaign, and he won. And we won down ballot uh, at state legislators. We flipped a bunch of house suite seats. We flipped a bunch of Senate seats in the state. Um, we flipped a bunch of uh, appellate court seats. Like there's just, it was just a very good day in Texas to be a Democrat. Well, good, but not a perfect day. Um, it was interesting. We're talking about history. Mm-hmm. You know, we study history and I get to study and teach American history, which I think is really fun. Um, but right now we were talking about the Revolutionary War triggers and why the colonists were so upset. And yeah, we're, so we're talking about taxes, you know, like the Boston Tea Party, tea tax, stamp tax, intolerable acts, township acts, like all, all of the stuff. But today we were going through just like definitions of when these things happened, what they were, who was involved and all this other stuff. And then we got to the point where you know, colonists, they were either a patriot, a loyalist, or a neutralist. And then so we were explaining that, and they were picking, you know, which side they thought that they would have belonged to back then. Um, Did anyone say loyalist? Yeah, they did. Interesting. And they said, because I don't like having consequences for the, like, I would not want to get in trouble for trying to do something against what the person of authority tells me. So I will do what my person of authority tells me because that's who I'm supposed to follow. And they understand the taxes and they understand how, you know, 
I mean, they're not experiencing it, but it was, it was an interesting debate, but then they also thought about, well, what, what would happen if we did that right now? Like, could we do that? And then I was, well, then it was like this whole no. thing of like, should I even approach the subject of, so if people decided that they really didn't like the president, because it's like the king, and then and then I just decided not to go yeah, down we, that rabbit we hole. We tried that already. There was a whole big war over it. I know. And the conclusion of the war was, no, you can't do that. I know. And if you try to do that, we're going to send soldiers in there and say, no, you still belong to this country. And you I, can't secede I tried to it. tell them. I was like, that would be like if Texas decided that we did not want to be part of the United States anymore. Which and one little did. And one little boy goes, and that would be really bad because I know we're a big state. Texas against the entire army, <laughs> we would die. <laughs> and it, it's just, it was a fun little That's conversation. I great. like teaching history. Yeah, but unfortunately, my thorn is also related to the midterms because my boy, my yeah. boy Beto O'Rourke did not win. Yeah. Um, he, a hard fought campaign, over 4 million people in the state voted for him, which was more than the number of people voted for Hillary in, in 2016, which is crazy because you never get turnout at midterm elections. You just don't get it. And uh, he got it. And it was exciting. I think he's going to be a candidate that has a lot of potential in the future. And I can't wait to see what he does. But it was unfortunate to see Ted Cruz, the Zodiac killer, mm. elected to another turn, another term in the Senate. Six more years of having to listen to Ted Cruz. We should have watched or picked movies about serial killers next week. We we should have picked movies about the election, is what I realized while we were sitting at Barnes & Noble looking at movies. Well, I don't know election movies well, that I would have picked. You could have dug deep, babe. Like what? There's probably like a Mary-Kate and Ashley like election movie no. somewhere. Some, something like, I don't know. Some ridiculous Disney channel. She does Disney give a channel. speech in one movie. Of course she does. Of course she does. For a debate. For, so yeah. you could do debate... So that's my thorn, too. I mean, like, it was... Mm. Tuesday night was really stressful. I was stressed out the entire time. Um, I specifically cleared that night so I wouldn't have any responsibilities I had to do, which is part of the reason why this podcast is late, because we cleared... We were supposed to do it on Tuesday, and I basically made the call. I'm not going to do it, because it's too much. It's too much responsibility on a night yeah. where I'm really stressed out. I, I would a be, Google invite and everything that I you be, sent me for that night, and then I showed you when the time came up, and you're like, No. It wouldn't have been. We're not doing it. It would have been like I would have been really tense. I would have been constantly checking my phone, and uh, I just don't think it would have been a good episode. So I made a call. It was it was the right call. It was a bad call. It was as good of a call as voting for Beto O'Rourke was. Your dad says it would have been a bad call, Ripley. Yeah, I mean, my dad does, but so does uh, so does. No, it's only your dad. So does aliens? No, he's the only one. He came up with that. He did. Wow. Yeah, he knew someone named Ripley. At least career mm -hmm. what was your thorn baby oh i don't know what was my thorn this week i mean i could say something else about work i just have a lot of kids in my class i let they're all great kids you know i don't dislike any of them which is great but I have a lot. It's, it's getting to be a lot. <laughs> like almost too many. Um, I don't know. Nothing really stands out. Okay. Your yeah. life is perfect. Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Yep. I'm glad. Thanks. It's a pretty good one. So that was the roses and half of a thorn. And semi thorns. I guess my thorn could be that I don't have a thorn. So I'm upset that there's no thorn for me to have. So my thorn is my thorn. That's a weird thing to complain about. I mean, it gives me a thorn. Sure. Haley. What? When we talk about the 90s. The 90s. The 90s were a good time. I was alive for all of them. You were. You were alive for just all of them. I was. You were not them, aware of your own existence. I might for not some have been aware as long as others, but I was alive for all of them. So you were born in. The year of our Lord, 1989. Yeah. I know, guys. It's such a shocker. You <laughs> thought I was just so old. I was born in That's, 1985. Yeah. Scott is old. So in the mid-90s, I was 10 years old, which means yeah. like the mid-90s 
was like my jam because it was like I was your space jam. Hell yeah. It was your space jam. Watch the shit out of that movie. It's a space jam. All right. <laughs> I did not expect Quick pause. Did I tell you earlier this year that someone was singing the I believe I can fly. No. I believe I can touch the sky in math class. He was like one of your kids? Yeah, he was erasing the board and he was just singing it. And mind you, he's ten years old. And I stopped the class and I said, I'll give you your heightened tickets, which they earn tickets for like positive behavior, if you can tell me what movie made that song famous. I don't know if that's true. I mean, I thought it was true. <laughs> and so he was like, I don't know. Uh, let me think about it. And then he like guessed a movie and it was wrong. So I said, okay, I'll give you some clues. And then I gave him his like to half of his height in tickets because he got it eventually. So I don't know if the kids have seen Space Jam or not. I guess they will when they remake it with LeBron. LeBron James Space Jam. All right. Yeah, so I was yeah. 10 in that, like, so all, like, the kid stuff of the 90s that everyone remembers, I was, like, prime age for it. Yeah. Um. So I have very fond memories of Saturday morning cartoons and pogs and slap bracelets. Pogs, and- slap bracelets, creepy crawlers. I loved my creepy crawlers machine. It was the best. Did you make creepy crawlers? We had this conversation last week. I, I know, did. but we didn't have it on the air, so I was trying to... No, we to- did. It was there. No, we didn't. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. I really liked my creepy crawlers. And then you asked me about easy bake ovens and I said, no, I did not do that. Did I have, I didn't, I didn't really have an easy bake oven. My little sister had an easy bake oven. So you lied. Did I say, so we had an easy bake oven. So what is your clearest nineties thing memory? Like when, when you think of the nineties, when someone says the phrase, the Mm nineties, what pops into your head? Um, I remember very vividly playing pogs on the tile <laughs> in my house before we moved to where my parents are currently living. Like it is a vivid, vivid memory. Um, so I have that. Pogs were such a dumb game. Oh, but they were so much fun. Yeah, but like I mean, it was fun to collect them, but actually playing the game. Yeah. That was dumb. Yeah. It was a dumb thing. Yeah. This is before the internet. We had to flip uh, milk bottle tops. Yeah. <laughs> I also had a Game Boy. I mean, that was a big deal. The fact that I got my pocket Nintendo Game Boy and I played Galaga on it. I was well, pretty good at that. You know, was this the Game Boy Pocket? Like that's the like you didn't have the OG Game Boy, the black and white big brick one that came with Tetris. No, I waited until it got to the slightly smaller version because yeah. I didn't like the big brick we one. We had the big brick one where you had to stand directly under a light because the back there was no backlit screen uh-huh. and it, it was terrible with lights. And we played so much Tetris. Yeah. So I, I played Tetris. I played Galaga. That was really fun. Um, Duck Hunt. Our that's, Nintendo. That's, that's early, though. That came out in the late 80s, I think. Or oh, well, I remember playing it when I was... Yeah. I'm thinking about all these memories that I have at my house where I was really little before. So my mom moved used to when like, I was like nine. My mom used to like enter contests like a, like tr- like sweepstakes contests a lot. Oh yeah. And so like we sweepstakes and she were huge. Would, and she would win stuff. Like they won an Atari um, when I was a very little kid. I think that's where they got a Nintendo from. So like we were one of the first people on the block that had the Nintendo entertainment oh, wow. system. That's cool. Yeah, I think you would be unsurprised to learn that most of my memories from the 90s uh, swirl around the playing of video games. And that's still true today. That's not true. I mean, not all of them, but you do play video games. I do, but yeah. I don't wouldn't say my memories are entirely around them. Specifically the Final Fantasy games. That was my jam in the 90s. All the Final Fantasy games. Um, Your jam now. Final Fantasy Seven, oh, I played that game so much. Hmm. That was like that. That was ninety seven, I think. Yeah, I went to Disney World for my birthday in ninety nine. It was a great time to be a kid because the internet was just coming out. I remember the first time we got AOL and you had to connect and it made modem noises. Yeah, and I had my own AOL Mavis login. Beacon. I had my oh, Encarta yes. online encyclopedia. Where you could research stuff. Britannica, through. yeah. 
Mine was in Carta. I didn't have Britannica. We were Britannica. Wow. That's yeah. Fancy. I know. And then I remember the first time we got like high speed internet. Mm. I think that might have been two thousands by then. Yeah, probably. But man, it's kids these days don't know how good they have it. Yeah. The nineties. When they were like, find the icon that is Internet Explorer. It looks like this. <laughs> it was really funny in that computer class. I remember I used to play Warcraft 2, Orcs mm-hmm. and Humans. No, the Tides of Darkness. I don't remember what the Warcraft 2 sub name was, mm-hmm. but I would play dial up games against my neighbor who lived right next door. Yeah. And the way that worked is it would you it would literally call because it was all through your, mm-hmm. your phone modem. So we had a second line for that. And I remember having to do the thing where my friend would call me to connect to my computer so we could play against each other and the phone would ring. The second line would ring. And you'd have to yell, Don't answer it! It's I'm, I'm playing something. Don't don't answer it. Yeah. And it was I remember that, that was my life. Yeah. We played so much of that. Yeah, I remember that too. Now these kids they're just online all the time. All, all the, the time. time. All Don't the time. Even... They couldn't even imagine a world without internet. And we mean, sound like those old people. I mean, if you can remember the time when the internet first came around or wasn't even there. I mean, to be fair, I couldn't imagine a time without internet anymore. So, cuz every time our internet breaks for like a day, I'm like, what do I what do I do? Where do I? You do know, it? you know what you do. What it's called life. And um, it's called overrated conversation. Overrated, and it's called babe, engaging t- with people. Babe, I have conversations like all the time. Yeah, it's what my whole website is. I know. is people having conversations. I know, but I think that there's a difference between a face to face conversation via one through a device. Yeah, I know the one through the device is better because it reaches more people. Boom. Interesting that you would have that philosophy considering that you are with me all the time face to face. And so you're saying the conversations that we have aren't as good because I'm face to face with you. I mean, you you're the one that said it, not me. No, so. you're the one that said no, it. I think you did. No. Um, Elise. Mm hmm. I loved the 90s. They were a good time. But I think we've got some specific movies to talk about in the 90s because mm-hmm. that's another thing I did a lot in the 90s was I watched a lot of movies. Okay. Like what? Do I go first? I think I do go first this time. Yes, I go first. It was a perfect segue, and then you just were like, oh, what do I, what do, I do? I watched, and we watched, 1996's The Rock. I probably did not see this movie in 1996, considering I was 11. Um, I don't think I saw this yeah, movie in the theater, not. but I did hear about it at school and then want to go home and watch it. Um, this movie was written by David Weisberg, Douglas Cook, and Mark Rosner. When there are three writers, you know it's going to be good. Uh, it was directed by the Michael Bay. This was his second feature-length film. What was his first? Bad Boys. I never saw Bad Boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come? With you, were, ha, Either of them? Nope. Wow. We're going to have to have like a, a Michael Bay a thon for you. Mm. All you've seen is his Transformers film, and I guess this now. But then what would I do? Well, we'll just would have I maybe a Scott takes over the podcast week. I think that sounds. No, we skipped it. We didn't do that for your birthday. Yeah. You were gone. So there's no week that that's going to happen. <laughs> this movie that was your own fault. This movie is about a mild mannered chemist and an ex-con must lead the counterstrike when a rogue group of military men led by a renegade general threaten a nerve gas attack from Alcatraz against San Francisco. It's not a very well-constructed sentence. And it's also kind of not accurate because anyone that Nicolas Cage plays cannot be described as mild-mannered. I mean, here's the thing. I think that it boils down to the fact that these IMDb summaries... <laughs> are, are really, I don't know where they get them from. I believe they're we, written by users. Well, you know, when you have that like double-double toil and trouble about the capitalist mm. ant that was never completely even shown yeah. to have had that side in the movie. And then you have this, 
you know, I think it just, maybe we should get our summaries from, from somewhere else. But where would we get them from? I don't know. I don't know. We might have to write them ourselves. Ooh, that no. would be an interesting writing experiment. Maybe we'll try to do them ourselves. How about the person that didn't see the movie before writes the summary I like for it. the other movie? I like so it. So you can write the summary for mine and I'll write the summaries for yours. I like it. So The Rock. I think that's better. The Rock stars Sean Connery as John Mason, Nicolas Cage as Stanley Goodspeed. It's a wonderful Michael Bay character name. Ed Harris plays the bad guy. Francis Hummel, John Spencer from uh, West Wing fame, plays an FBI director, Womack. This, this movie has a bunch of people in it, babe. It does. It has a lot. Um, did you know that Quentin Tarantino was an uncredited screenwriter on this film? So there were four screenwriters? As was Aaron Sorkin. There were five. See, Aaron couldn't have his name to it because I bet you that these people did not do like word for word yeah. script. So and he, maybe this is where what's his name met Aaron Sorkin. Do you think that they met probably before West Wing? Who's what's his name? Um, the guy from West Wing. Well, considering he's uncredited on the script, I don't think Aaron Sorkin was on set. So maybe it was a thing kind of like the whole busy Phillips thing. I believe John Spencer worked with Aaron Sorkin before uh, West Wing. You know, cause we watched Blades of Glory, uh-huh. right? And we talked about it on the podcast. And we were going, like, you're going rogue here. We were like, hey, Busy Phillips got a writing credit. That's weird. And then I read her book and I realized why she got a writing credit. You want to know why? Because it was her idea and the guys stole it. And then she was the one that had originally filed it with the screenwriting people. And had they not given her credit, she could have sued them. Can we talk about The Rock now? Yeah, I guess so. So this is a Michael Bay film, and therefore it has all the very traditional Michael Bay isms. And as a person who hasn't seen a lot of Michael Bay films, I'm wondering if you could give me a kind of summary of what a Michael Bay film is like. I'm, I'm curious if, if you've seen enough to kind it's of... very jumpy in your face and very... He tries, he tries to make it intense. What do you mean by jumpy? Jumpy, like it just like always is cutting jumpy, jumpy, so jumpy. It cuts around a lot. It yeah. cuts around a lot. And it, it shows a lot of like thing, like I feel like buildings and machines and like all of that sort of thing. And it shows people too, but it's like very interested in, in the things that are around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. How would you say Michael Bay feels about women? You know, there was what one woman in the whole movie, <laughs> yeah, and she was the the fiance. Mm-hmm. And then you think about Megan Fox in Transformers mm-hmm. and how number one her character was, and number two how badly she was treated on set and why she wasn't in the later ones. Don't think he has a good relationship with women. How do you think Michael Bay feels about the United States government? Um. Not very good. (laughs) How do you think Michael Bay feels about the military? They're very powerful. (laughs) This is fun. And you you are absolutely 100% correct. Um, This is a movie that I think, like, Bad Boys, if you look at it, is a very Michael Bay movie. But this movie really kind of cemented his style. I think the amount of time between cuts in this movie, like the average amount of time between cuts is two and a half seconds, which is pretty quick. Um, he likes to cut around a lot. He thinks government is incompetent and stupid and, and bad, but but military working men, um, the guys on the ground doing the thing are are should be honored. Like that's that's the whole weird part about this whole movie is that like the bad guy, Francis Hummel, the general, uh, the main antagonist is actually like his his gripes are understandable like the united states government fucked over these soldiers and he wants to honor them and he's doing it in kind of a stupid way a way that gets out of his control but he doesn't actually want to hurt anyone he's not actually a bad guy it's some of the mercenaries under him that end up like going full bad but um i think that's one of the things that's fascinating about this movie i want to talk about nicholas cage i want to talk about The fact that The Rock was not in the movie. Well, we'll get to that, I guess. I don't know how what else to say about that. Besides, Nicolas Cage is not The Rock. He's not. You know who would be better in The Rock? The Rock. 
It was 1996, babe. It was too early. Was The Rock not around in 1996? He was a wrestler. He was not a movie star. <sighs> if only he'd gotten into movies earlier. Um, Nicolas Cage. What do you want to talk about? So Ni- Nicolas Cage is, is Nicolas Cage in this movie. It, in every, like, it, it's, he's ridiculous. Um, the scene where he's naked sitting in his chair with a guitar listening to the Beatles. Um, he improved a lot of his lines in this uh, movie. I can tell. Which you will not be surprised to hear. Um how in the name of Zeus's butthole did you get out of your cell? That would be a, a Nick Cage uh, improv gem there that Michael Bay wanted to cut from the movie. And Nicolas Cage said, no, you have to leave this in and won. I don't know how he won. Um, he's well, just every retake, you say the same thing. He's crazy. Yeah. Um, and he's crazy. Like this is one of the things about the Michael Bay protagonists is they're either like the man, the gruff manly men um, from the beginning and they just kind of stay that way the whole time or they're kind of like a zany comedic relief, like twitchy kind of weirdo that ends up doing like super badass masculine things by the end of it. I'm thinking of Shia LaBeouf's character and like Transformers. Yeah. Um, but but I think Nick Cage is kind of like a proto Shia LaBeouf in this movie he's cut he's like the zany lab guy who's never been out in the field and never done anything and then by the end of the movie he's like shoving a ball of poison gas into someone's mouth and stabbing himself in the heart and then like lighting the flares and and down on his knees and waving the flares to stop them like it's such a character transformation for him and it's like a totally unbelievable one And, and that's one of the things that I really want to talk about this movie with um I loved this when I was a kid. I loved Michael Bay's movies when I was a kid because mm-hmm. they're loud and fast and exploding and things are always happening. You can never like he shoots every single shot as it is as if it is the most intense shot ever, yeah. even when it's just people walking casually in and out of a building. Mm-hmm. And look, they're not good. This I don't think this is a good movie. Um, I think it's a fun movie and I enjoyed watching the movie again, but like objectively, there's just too, there's too much, there's too much going on. It's too much happening. Um, it's just, but, but that being said, I love Michael Bay. I love his style. I think it's fascinating to watch. Like I, I watch each and every one of his new movies cause I'm kind of fascinated by him as a filmmaker. Um, and I want to know what you thought about this movie. Um, I really like Ed Harris and I really like Sean Connery. So those people were very intriguing characters to watch and I really liked them. And I did think it was interesting that the antagonist of the story, you identify with really why he's doing it and, you know, his motivation is there, but his execution is not great. And I always think that those sorts of stories are interesting. Um... I I am just always pretty turned off by Nicolas Cage and this I mean this was a Nicolas Cage like this is Nicolas yep. Cage at, at what he is and why I don't like him Nicolas Cage and he's just like I just don't get it I, I don't get it. he's fun he's crazy it's just it's crazy to the point where it's like it doesn't make sense it's crazy and if it doesn't make sense then I don't like it okay and so that's what it is it's like why are you acting? Why are you behaving in this way? It doesn't seem to fit. Okay. And and that's my complaint. And see, he he tries too hard to come up with this like I'm supposed to be this weird like quirky character. So what can I do? To, and it's just like he's trying to be too artistic with it and like just let it be. Like just have fun with it and just let it be. See, I don't think that's what he's doing at I all. I think I think he over is he's over analyzing what he wants to do and by doing <laughs> that is just that's, that's me. That's hilarious because I think he's doing the exact opposite. I don't think he's analyzing whatever. it at all. I think he's just doing whatever that pops into his head at the time and his head's a little weird. Hmm. Anyways, but I mean, the action was good. Here's the here's here's the reason why people love The Rock. The soundtrack is fucking great. But no, because I told you I was listening to it and I was like, this is Pirates of the Caribbean. It kind of is is Pirates of the Caribbean. And I kept listening to it. and I was like, this is Pirates of the Caribbean. And then after that, you're like, no, this is the man in the iron mask. So these sound like I don't know. 
if they came, yeah. I guess that came first before pirates, evidently. And yeah. whoever did pirates, so Han, maybe based, Han, I don't know. Hans Zimmer did this. Um, there's and, also a composer named Nick Glennie Smith, who also composed the man in the iron mask. And if you put this soundtrack up next to the man in the iron mask, it's like beat for beat the same, like, like the, yeah. the, the, the basic rhythm of the song is identical. Now they add some things like man, the iron mask is a period piece from French revolution. So, yeah. uh, they changed, they changed it to sound a little more like that. It's a little more operatic than, um, this movie is, but the, the soundtrack is the same. And you're absolutely right. It what sounds a that? lot. It was like the bum, bum, ba da da bum, ba da da bum, ba da 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 And it was yeah. like, yeah, which that, is, I mean, that's no, that, it, it was yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. And, you know, Hans Zimmer is a very well-respected composer and has been around far longer than whoever it was that I Googled did the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. <laughs> but I was just like, I kept listening to it and thinking, I know this, I know this, I know this. And then all of a sudden it just clicked and I thought, oh my gosh, this is insane. But I mean, like, it's a great soundtrack. The The pirate stuff is super memorable and I love it. But then once I just kept hearing that it was the same thing, I just felt, I guess I should feel more cheated with the pirates thing, but I hadn't <laughs> known that this was around. So I guess, yeah, well, the this thing- is the... The thing is, I think um, a lot of times what happens in filmmaking is filmmakers like the music, the composing is usually like the last thing done. It's it's done pretty late in post-production, but directors will uh, use temp tracks a lot, which is this. Mm-hmm. They take music from a thing they like and just throw it in yeah. um, and say, I want it like it's I want it to be something like this. And so they throw that temp track in as just like stuff that's it's not going to be in the final movie, but it gives like the mood and the tone that they're going Mm -hmm. for with the music. And a lot of times what happens in filmmaking is a director gets so like married to that temp track because they've listened to it so much as they're going through the editing process that when it comes to the composer, not only are they saying I want it to be just like that, they're saying I want it to be that. And, and, And I think I'm not like I obviously Michael Bay didn't do this with The Rock because I think out of all the sounds we heard this is the earliest of those movies but i would not be surprised if they didn't have conversations like that where i want it to be just like the music in this movie i want it to be like the man in the iron mask like the rock um it would not surprise me if pirates went that way if that's what they were going for um and that happens a lot in movies actually if you if you watch a lot of movies and you really listen to the soundtracks you see a a lot of similarities between some soundtracks well and then even just with composers like right well that may i mean that but that makes sense i mean that's their style yeah yeah like it it would not surprise me at all to hear that Hans zimmer did pirates of the caribbean but he he didn't yeah i was certain that the person would have done the same thing but then it would be like why are they doing the same thing for two different movies so i guess it makes sense that someone just stole it but i think i mean when you look back at the most successful Michael Bay films, the music is such an integral part of it. And I think, I think he, he recognizes along with his like crazy action is crazy. His, his action is like so fast cutting and so it moves around so much. You can barely tell what's going on and he likes it that way. And I think when you have action like that, the music really has to direct you, has to lead you through the scenes. And I think that's what the music does in this. And I think that's why it works. And, you know, you're right. Sean Connery is incredible in this movie. I think he's fantastic. I just like Sean Connery. He was my favorite Bond. You know, he signed on to do this movie after he heard that Nick Cage was in it. He's like, oh, Nick Cage is doing it. Then I'm in. And I just lost some points for Sean Connery. (laughs) He's probably like, I've heard this guy's so insane. Let me see what's really happening. And the answer is. Except he was like, I've heard that this man is so insane. That was a really bad accent. Yeah, what was that? I don't know. It was me trying to sound in a deep British accent. All right. It wasn't good. But yeah, I mean, I, I loved every bit of this movie. Um, I, I I still enjoyed it this time around. Um, you obviously only kind of did. You're not huge into action either. No, I love action movies. I really do. Well, then what was wrong with this movie? Nicolas Cage. That's it? Yeah. Everything and there else? was no Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You can't. You can't mark a movie off for not having The Rock in it. Okay, well, it was really Nicolas Cage then. Have you ever been to Alcatraz? No, we've already gone over this. Not on the... Are you sure? Is this another Easy Bake Oven thing? It's not. Are you sure? I'm doing this for the audience, babe. Uh, I know you've never been to San Francisco. Yeah. I have been to, Al- been to Alcatraz. Yeah. It is a bird sanctuary now, and it uh, there's a lot of poop on it. 
Does I don't know. Porgs? I don't know if it was a bird sanctuary. No, I don't know if it was a bird sanctuary back when they were filming this. I know it was still like there was a time where it was open to tourism. And so while they were filming, people could see them film. And then like it closed down from budget concerns. Um, I think it's still up. When I went, it was like 10 years ago now that I maybe more that I went. I don't um, know. So I don't know if it's open right now or not, but um, it's it's a cool setting. I'm sure it would be. It's a cool setting for I've a film. I've always kind of wanted to go. I mean, I love I love the setting of the film it takes place there on this like this old abandoned prison with two characters sneaking through and disabling rockets. And man, I, I like some of the looks that like I love the the lattice of um, poison globes that mm. the nerve gas is in. I think that's such a inventive design. It really like comes across like how deadly and scary these things are. Yeah, it was pretty cool. But I think we talked about The Rock enough. I really like this movie. This was a, a big a big movie for me in the 90s. I probably watched it 10 times at least. Mm. Uh, really loved it. I think part of the like, I think part of the reason I started getting into The Beatles was because Stanley Goodspeed oh really gosh. loved The Beatles. That's horrible. He loved The Beatles. I'm never going to listen to The Beatles with you anymore now. If it's because of that. I'm a Beatle maniac. And also, it sounds better. He was collecting vinyl before it was cool to collect vinyl. According to the movie. Yeah. 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 So that's Michael Bay. Yeah. We'll be back to Bay. I'm going to make you watch the Bad Boys movies. Bad Boys 2 is like um, the peak Michael Bayness. It is so insane. Hmm. I, I, I could talk about that movie for hours, um, but that'll be later. Okay. But we got to watch the first one or else you won't understand the motivation of any of the I'm characters. I'm sure I would get it. All right, Elise, what yep. movie did you want to talk about? So in the 90s, there were a couple of people that were really well known. Well. Well, maybe not really well known. <laughs> Devin Sawa might not have been real well known, but JTT, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Jonathan Taylor Thomas from The Lion King. Jonathan Taylor Thomas from Home Improvement. Oh. Jonathan Taylor Thomas from... Jonathan Taylor Thomas. It was JTT mania in the nineties. If you were everybody, a, if you were a ten year old girl, everybody yeah. loved JTT. It was phenomenal. So I picked Wild America. What is? Yes, it has Davin Sawa, and it has JTT, and no one really cares who the third brother is, but it has those two. What is Wild America? Wild America is a movie about three brothers who go on a road trip in order to film wild animals i'll read the imdb summary though we'll see what they actually say it's uh three brothers who are obsessed with the animals are given permission from their parents to travel around america with a camera documenting wildlife that was a pretty good one it's not bad that was good imdb i i appreciate whoever that user was it might have been me maybe not but it, it could have been it could have been me. Yeah. yeah so, so yeah. um this is based on a tr true story kind of sort yeah of. so it's just it's three brothers and the oldest one wants to make movies and so he always does these home videos and then the middle brother is the one that kind of helps him out and the younger one is their guinea pig that they get to do all of the stupid things that they experiments i don't know what else to <laughs> say about it that sounds really shady yeah they just mess with him. he's jonathan taylor thomas he's the youngest brother so they just yeah. screw with him yeah i guess that's better i thing. think it is interesting that you picked for your 90s movie, mm -hmm. you picked a, a movie that takes place in the 60s. This is a, a period piece. It doesn't matter. It was made in the 90s. We were really into the 60s and the 90s. That's the 30-year cycle. Yeah. And it had the people from the 90s that were, like, huge in the 90s in it. Well, huge. Which, huge. Huge. Did they you, were huge in the 90s. Did you know that their mother, mm -hmm. Agnes, who's played by Frances Fisher... Yeah. Um, originally was cast as the wife in Home Improvement. She I did was not. Jonathan Taylor Thomas's mother. I did but not. She tested really poorly mm. in screenings. Yeah, they, they just don't have a really good her. mother son relationship. And I mean, it's it just... probably more she didn't get along with uh, uh. with old old Tim Allen. The, the the beacon of wonderfulness that is Tim Allen. Tim Allen. I don't like. I don't no. like Tim Allen. Tim, Tim Allen's Allen. an asshole. Yeah. I don't like him. Yeah. Um, anyway, so why did you? Oh, she tested to be the mom on Home Improvement. Yeah, that's I what I said. I thought you meant 
I interpreted this wrong. I thought you meant that the mom on Home Improvement tried to be the mom in this movie. No, the opposite. Okay, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Tim Allen's a little finicky. Yeah, he also uh, sold cocaine. You know, um, I think everyone does at some point in time, right? That's a, that's a real 90s show. Did you watch that show in the 90s? Home Improvement? I watched the shit oh, out of that show. Oh, yeah. Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching the very last episode where Wilson came out and you saw his face and everyone was like, oh, no, it's Wilson's face. And it was the whole buzz like Wilson's face is going to be revealed on the very last episode of Home Improvement. Do you remember the one where Jonathan Taylor Thomas's character got like really sick and they didn't know if he was going to die or something? And it was a really dramatic episode. I don't know if I remember that one. Well, where are happened. episodes of Home Improvement? I kind of want to go back and watch Home Improvement. And then they made the, the youngest um, kid like super goth later in the show. Oh, yeah. The oldest brother, though, in that, he actually was friends with my piano teacher. In, what? Yeah. Not my piano teacher. My piano teacher's daughter. He played soccer in like just a normal like everyday kid soccer league. And she my piano teacher's daughter played in the soccer league and they like would meet up at all of these different like travel tournaments and stuff he was one of those kids that was in a bunch of the teen shows in the early yeah. 2000s too because yeah. he was in smallville he was a he played jtt no the both older brother i think they both oh, they both, they both played uh bad guys in episodes hmm. of smallville yeah um okay so let's talk about this movie wild america wild america yes why did you pick what, what what do you have to say about wild i mean america? we just watched wild america all the time when we were little was it just because of the cute boys it was a lot of because of the cute boys and then it was fun because again it was three boys and we had three girls and we loved making home videos when we were little and so i've seen some of them they are wonderful yeah they're really funny and i would like pretend to be a person like a survivalist sort of thing and it was really fun um and I would always appreciate when there were like three children and the middle child was like the the cool kid what? in this one. It was <laughs> was like Devin Salvo was like the smooth one. Not was only he? was he the cute one, but he was the smooth one. Was and I was he? like, that's like me. Middle children, we're cool. And it was that sort of thing. I don't know if he's cool in this, though. I mean, he got all the ladies. Yeah, I guess he yeah, was the he ladies all, man. He was the ladies man. And yeah. he was the cute one. He was the cute no, ladies JTT man. JTT was the cute one. JTT was like, oh, it's a little baby deer cute. Oh, I see. Devin Sawa was like the, yeah, he's the stud. And I guess we should say Scott Berstow plays Marty. The no one cares brother. about Marty. Marty was horrible. Well, that's the thing about this movie, Elise. What? Is this is a movie about marty or it's supposed to be it's about supposed marty. to be about the brothers the movie is about the brothers yeah but okay so wild america this is based on a true story wild yeah. america is yeah. the name of the documentary series yeah. that the eldest brother marty produced in the 70s yeah. and his middle brother mark i think his name was um oh, assisted him names. with so all three of these brothers ended up being filmmakers when they grew up yeah um but wild america is about marty and the movie kind of sort of like bumps into being about him because like the main conflict in this movie is Marty versus father because it's the story of like the, the, um, you know, conservative working, dad, working class yeah. dad who like, you're going to do my job when you grow up, which is washing carburetors. That's what they do. They just wash carburetors, and um, deliver them. Yeah. Um, and you're going to fall into the family line of work and no dad, I want to make movies and like, no, you can't do that. You got to, and you don't respect. So, so I'm going to go find the, the cave of a thousand bears. Yeah. A hundred bears. Man, whatever. Those, those bears looked fake as shit. I mean. Like the difference between the real bears and the scenes where the kids were yeah. in it and the fake bears yeah. where the kids were actually in that's it. That's true. Was you could definitely very tell. Very noticeable. Yeah, that's true. But I think that the reason that they made it less about Marty and more about the other brothers and even the youngest brother is because it was John the Taylor Thomas. Yeah. JTT. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, I mean, that was the weird thing about it. And and I think that's like, it just, I don't know if the movie, like it was trying to do all those things at the same time. I mean, if you had no idea though, that it was about the oldest brother. I would say it's a movie about Marshall. Then you would say it's a movie about Marshall and a movie about the brothers and it was fine. But and that's what I saw it as. No, like, but I, I, didn't I think still it think was... it's kind of, I don't know. It's, I, I think it's kind of unfocused. And I think 
the middle brother, and maybe this is just middle child syndrome, I think he gets short shrift as far as the storylines of the film go because he doesn't really have anything to do because it's his oldest brother that's like the one really into filmmaking. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Jonathan Taylor Thomas that has the whole subplot with the plane that he's building with his dad and his dad lies to him about being a pilot. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? Sawa, it doesn't matter because Sawa, everyone loves Sawa. Sawa don't got a lot to do. Sawa doesn't need a lot to do. He's just doing the ladies and exactly. enjoying it. Um, but yeah, so I read that uh, the end the end of the movie, they show their film to their hometown crowd. Yeah. Um, and it like there's a scene where Jonathan Taylor Thomas like shot them going skinny dipping with um, with some girls and like he, he yeah. snuck like he 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 didn't tell them he did that. And so when they watch the film back, there's a moment where the brother like looks shocked that that's in there. I'm like, that's not how filmmaking works. Like he didn't look at his film at all before he played it in front of a thousand people. Like he did no editing at all. You got to develop the film. They just took it to someone to develop it. It, it just it's not re realistic. I didn't care. It was the nineties. That's not what I cared about. But it, but in real life, um, the 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 moment in real life where he showed the film to his town was actually mm -hmm. bigger. Um, there were about the a thousand people there. Over a thousand people came to watch this film. He sold tickets and it paid for the whole trip and it paid for the next trip he took after that one. Um, That's cool. And I think the in the I think they, I think it was just him in the in real life he just went by himself and he went to just alaska he went around alaska um obviously they needed to dramatize it and they brought all three brothers to do it but it seemed like it was just him and they went across america yeah wild america i'm not sure like they did go across a lot of america and i'm not sure why i don't know how they did it in that short of a time period because like, like there's it was really they went, fast I think it seemed like they went to louisiana um, then they went to the Midwest cause there's like the, the great like, Canyon. it seemed like they were in Utah. Yeah. Um, I, and let me tell you that car the car did not look like it could have held up, no. but and also you know they're looking worked. for the bear cave the whole time and going to places all around America. And I don't understand why they did that. Doesn't matter. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Adorable. He Devin flies Sawa. a plane. He just, he just pops into a plane, never flown before, flies it around. Some people are born with skills. He's got that skill. Like that's, him. I think it's exactly what happened with my dad. I think he just got in a plane. Yep. And just like. Met um, this guy named Ripley. And then. Wait. You know. <laughs> what? So my dad's in Aliens now. No. I told you. He just knew someone named Ripley growing up. Believe it or not. Yep. That was a bad joke. You're smiling a little bit though. Scott, uh -huh. that was a bad joke. It was not a bad joke. It was okay. clever. You're just okay. mad because you didn't think of it. No, At I least, set you up for it. Do you have anything else you want to say about this movie? Um, I don't. I don't know. I it's yeah. like it was. It's one of those like kids movies you watch as a kid. That's just like not. It, it doesn't like I, I don't. I enjoy it because I watched it when I was little, yeah. and I have nostalgia for it. If I watched it later, I probably wouldn't. And so that's that. I'm going to make my kids watch it if it's ever on Netflix. There's a bunch of very I'll make my students silly watch that. animal things. Yeah, I think they like would he enjoy He rides it. on a moose into a the rapids. Yeah, that was kind of fun. And then the bears. Maybe I couldn't have my kids watch it because they do go skinny dipping. But they don't I guess show you don't anything. See anything. You don't see anything. But then they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, they're running through!" Because I mean, we'll there's that thing with the statue. Fast and forward really through cool. that part. Yeah. What thing with the statue? Kids were like freaking out because it was a like a sphinx statue, and it had, a, it had you know, it had boobies. I was like, guys, the statue had boobies. This is not. This is not a real person. This is like <laughs> boobies. It's a statue. Boobies. Anyways, um, I think that's it. That's it for wild America. It was not very wild that America. Yeah, it was. Yeah, nah. people on moose had alligators eating you. Had that really creepy guy that was just like, <laughs> that guy was so creepy. Yeah. What? What? The whole concept is they're like being dangerous to get the dangerous shots that no one else is willing to. Yeah. That's dumb. Don't do that. You're gonna die. I they mean, it was died. fun. People do it all the time. Storm chasers. Yeah, and they die. Not all of them. Guess what Steve Irwin did? He got really close to all now the Now, that was a freak accident. 
No, it was playing with dangerous animals. No, that was a freak accident. Yeah, with a dangerous animal. I mean... You're swimming around dangerous animals. Stingrays sting you. That's what they do. It was a freak accident. It was sad. It was really sad. It was. It was really sad. But I agree. And now with, his daughter is going to make Wild America fire, sequels. You get stung in the heart by a stingray. Hmm. At so least what a are good we, lesson to learn. What are we doing next week? What's the theme for next week? We're doing like something with these silly, ridiculous comedies that for some reason we still like them anyways. So basically movies we know are bad. They're silly. Um I wanted to say dumb, but apparently dumb is not a good word anymore. I was told by Elise. So. I mean, it's fine. I, I guess I said stupid earlier. Yeah. Um, really they're, they're, just, they're just dumb movies that you know are dumb, that you know are bad, but you love them anyway. Um, I'm picking Land of the Lost, the Will Ferrell movie. Anything Will Ferrell probably could fit in that category. To yeah, be but quite I think, honest. well, I think some of the dumb, some of the fun, some Will Ferrell comedies are actually like really good. I know this is a bad movie. Like okay. I know this is a terrible, terrible movie, but I love it. Okay. I think I, I have such fond memories of this movie, watching this movie with my friends. Well, we will watch it, and then we are also going to watch Bubble Boy. It's amazing. Oh boy. It's like we just keep on moving through my crushes of younger years. Devin Sawa, Jake Gyllenhaal. What's next? I don't know. I'll have to decide. All right. So that's next week. We're going to watch a couple of dumb movies we love. Um, this is one of those times where I'd say, like, if you don't really want to follow along with us, I would understand. Oh, my gosh. No, everyone needs to watch Bubble Boy. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yes, you do. OK, well, everyone go watch Bubble Boy. Thank you. You won't regret it. You won't. You will. You're going to regret it a lot. You won't regret it. <laughs> all right. That is all we have time for this week. If you like this podcast and want to see more of it, you can check it and all the other shows we do over at doofmedia.com. Also, where can they go to donate to us, Elise? Patreon. What's the web address? I don't know. Patreon.com slash doof media. Yeah. You can go there and dollar and donate a dollar a month or whatever else you can afford. You get access to a bunch of cool exclusive do things. You, um, what? Do you take Bitcoin? Um, I don't think so. Matt set up a lot of cryptocurrency stuff on the website. If you go to doof media. Oh, I'm glad he did. If you go to doofmedia.com. Good job, Matt. Thanks for letting us get Bitcoin. And click on support. I don't think. I don't think we take Bitcoin. There's a bunch of other crypto. Like he, I don't know. Just go to doofmedia.com. We take cryptocurrency slash though. Support. I'm really kind of excited about okay. that, guys. If you got cryptocurrency, we'll take it. Send us all that crypto, guys. Send it to us. All right, that's it for the '90s. We're moving on to bad, bad movies that I just Land are of the they? Lost. Are they? Land though? of the Lost is so good. That one's bad. <laughs> so, Bubble Boy. So it's ridiculous. Good. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>